what we're going to do is we're going to look at Kick Secure and we're going to convert this Debian install to a Kick Secure installation. And from there, we're going to install our Virtualizer and our Hunix installation. Now we're looking at the installation of Hunix documentation. And we're doing so on a USB stick, which we have already installed Debian onto as a first step. We've also installed YPry, which is an optional set of scripts and services. And at this point, we need to install a supported virtualizer. But first, as mentioned, we need to see the operating system recommendations. So we went with the Debian. It is one of the recommended ones. And on here, from here, we can then install Kick Secure on top of Debian. And so that's what we're going to be doing next. So what you're going to need to do is ensure you have the account user existing. You also want to ensure that it is in the sudo group. So you can check on that and we see that it is in the sudo group. I ran the command id user, or if I'm already logged in as user, I would just use id. And this is actually a root shell, so it shows that. But you can also check the id of different users by typing their username after the id command. And as we can see, it's already in the required sudo uh, location with privileges for that. And so next, what we need to do is we need to update everything and then we're going to copy and paste these commands here so we'll go ahead and do apt update and then the double ampersands are going to only run the next command after the first one has completed so we can save ourselves a couple enter keys by simply doing that and we're going to go ahead and do that then we'll do apt full upgrade and we'll do the y flag to answer automatically yes Okay, now that we've upgraded Debian, we can go ahead and follow the next commands here. Next, we're going to do apt install. And at this point, we're going to do add group. We're going to add the user to the group in case it's not there already. Next, we're going to need to reboot, and then we'll get on to installing the Kick Secure signing key after we've done this. Since we already have the user, user, so we'll go ahead and reboot. All right, we've rebooted our system. We've gone through the previous steps, and now we're going to add the Kick Secure signing key. So what we'll need to do here is we're going to need to make sure curl is installed. So we'll go ahead and open a terminal to do so. Looks like curl is here, so we can go ahead and begin with our commands. We've already done the apt update and full upgrade command, so we don't need to go through that again since we just did so. Now that we have curl, we verified it exists. We can go ahead and download the Kick Secure signing key. So we're going to go over and ensure we're set on Debian, not Cubes. So what we'll need to do here is we will click that to copy. And then from here, we will paste it right in our terminal. And we'll go ahead and add that key.
Now we need to add the kick secure repository. And so what we're going to do is since I don't have Tor installed, in fact, why not just go ahead and try installing that first so we can do this properly. Of course, having Tor installed is going to be a more secure way to upgrade our system in general. And that's what the apt transport Tor does is it helps you upgrade using a more secure means using the end-to-end -end encryption provided on the Tor hidden service onions. And since we've done the previous, we'll go ahead and go down to the very next command. We're going to go ahead and do that as well. Now we need to install the kick secure package. And since we want to go with the GUI version, we're going to, in place of the CLI, we're going to type out kick secure XFCE host. Now, do not run the commands that aren't for your operating system. So do not run these here. You don't need to install those on this because we don't run that operating system. So I'll show you the whole command here. We'll go ahead and do the kick secure XFCE host. need to ensure that Tor is started first. And what we'll do is we'll rerun that command. And we need to do it as root as well, so I need to add a sudo there. Right in front of the apt. You have to make sure that Tor is running before going through any commands that depend on it. So if you have an error there, that may be what you're missing. After installing, we're going to need to go ahead and answer some questions. Go with LightDM. As you notice, I also have Laptop, which is a very generic host name. Now, anytime you connect to a network, be it a Wi-Fi or Ethernet-based connection, your host name of your computer can act as a fingerprint. So something nice and generic between your username as well as your host name is always preferable. All right, so there we go. Let's take a look at our next steps. So we may want to follow the guidelines here for the apt sources, which is where our operating system, when it goes through its upgrades and everything else, is going to use as the location. So we'll go ahead and follow the commands recommended here. So what we'll do is we'll do... Next, we're going to touch. An empty file. So the touch command, what that does is it actually creates an empty file. And after this, we're going to go ahead and set the onionized Debian repositories. And so we'll go ahead and try it out. So what we'll need to do for that is we're going to go ahead and onionize. So what that means is it'll use Tor Hidden Services for all updates, installs, and upgrades. So we'll go ahead and use this. You can also do this if you have a Debian-based install that has this accessible in its upgrades. So what we'll need to do, I'll show you the current directory I'm in. So you'll want to have root privileges or use the sudo command for this and then what you're going to want to do is list the files and we're going to use vim but you can use nano as well to edit this and we're going to edit our source file list this is where it's going to access all of the packages 
and we're going to go ahead and edit that to enable the tour hidden service and it's not required but it's something i did want to cover so we'll go ahead and open this so by default debian has these involved so we'll go ahead and add a hash mark in front of those so you'll notice all these hashed out ones all you need to do is delete all of those hash marks and then once you do that I'll show you, we'll hit the escape key to save with colon WQ, save and quit, write and quit. And now that we've edited it properly, we can then update and connect to those. Make sure tours started first if you're using this option. And then what we'll do is we'll do apt update ampersand ampersand and then apt full upgrade just for good measure. So as you can tell, it completely switched over. It's not the clearnet.debian addresses. It's now the onion domain. So now that we have our Kick Secure operating system all set up, we built our Debian install and then we added and converted it to a Kick Secure operating system, which is actually what Hunix is based on. So what we'll need to do, and what you'll need to do, is copy and paste this for the installation, and that will download this Hunix installer right here. And the next step we'll need to do is bash and then dot slash Hunix installer. So we'll go ahead and do that since I've already downloaded it. One thing you'll want to ensure you have at least 10 gigabytes of free space and this is something I learned by actually using a USB stick that didn't quite have the 10 gigabytes of space and I actually turned that into a g-parted tutorial on resizing your encrypted volumes so I will have that up as well on the channel and we're just gonna wait for it to finish the installation of Hunix Now it asks if I'd like to start the Hunix virtual machine right now. And I'm going to go ahead and answer why for yes. As you can see, I have a drop down list of a boot menu, everything running in virtual machines. The Hunix gateway handles all of the Tor routing and it also helps with preventing leaks of various kinds in applications wherein normally if you were to run something like proxy chains or Torify that can have the potential to fail and if it fails to proxy the connections well your IP address may make a di direct connection and leak something and so that's why Hunix runs with the virtual machine gateway and the virtual machine workstation the workstation you can also spawn up temporary virtual machines as well for something that completely forgets all activity and of course the virtual machines are running in concert so that your Hunix workstation is where you do all your work it's your desktop and the routing is done through the gateway will help prevent different types of leaks as well as the other various things including keyboard randomization things that will help prevent leaking out information with your operating system as well so we're gonna go ahead and hit understood so that we can progress to the next setting we're gonna go ahead and hit understood once again and now the setup wizard has been completed we'll click finish to run the system check we're gonna go ahead and do a direct connection to Tor network as Hunix depends on the Tor network to anonymize your connections for everything that you run on your Hunix virtual machine system it's going to all be Torified and has various measures to protect your security and anonymity all right we're all connected to the tour and now we are ready to use our Hunix workstation 
And as you can tell, since it's already on Tor, you notice when I opened the Tor browser here, which is web browser on the Hunix workstation, I didn't have to connect to Tor. That's because all of the Tor connection is performed through the virtual machine Hunix gateway. Do me a favor and just share this video anywhere and make sure to follow at the blog at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. It's public. You don't have to register to read it. I appreciate you following and supporting this. Thanks so much, and I will see you in the next video, and we will talk more about how to protect your security and privacy.